In this lecture, we will discuss how the cardiac cycle relates to the complex formed on the EKG. The cardiac cycle and complex formation. I think you're really going to enjoy this lecture because we're finally putting the electrical activity in the heart and correlating it to what we see on the EKG. So let's get started. Now you'll notice we have a box diagram of the heart and then we have one lead here. We will assume this is lead two throughout the lecture. Remember lead two is a limb lead and it sits at positive 60 degrees in the frontal plane. So let's take a look at this, okay? So here's our lead two, okay? So we'll be looking at that. And then lead two sits right here. If you imagine our frontal plane, this would be lead one, the positive end at zero degrees. This is AVF, okay, the positive end at positive 90 degrees. This would be plus or minus 180 degrees, minus 90 degrees, okay? And then we have lead two that sits right here at positive 60 degrees. So that's lead two right here, okay? And we're gonna now go through and label the cardiac cycle, okay? So the areas we're gonna discuss are the baseline, okay? We'll come to see that becomes the TP segment. So the baseline being this flat area here, okay? So notice that, that's our baseline. And then we have the PR interval. The PR interval includes the P wave and the PR segment. This is our P wave. And then our PR segment is this portion here. We'll call it PRS. So the PR interval is from the beginning of the P wave up until the beginning of our QRS complex. We call that the PR interval. Then we have the QRS complex. The QRS complex is this portion, okay? It's made up of Q waves, R waves, and S waves. Not all of them are always present. We see them all here, okay? Remember the first negative deflection after our P wave is this Q wave. The first positive deflection after the P wave is our R wave. And the first negative deflection after the R wave is what we call an S wave. And then we come to the ST segment. The ST segment starts at the J point or junction point at the end of the QRS complex and goes up until the beginning of uh, ventricular repolarization or our T wave. So this area right here is our ST segment. And then we have our T wave okay, representing ventricular repolarization. And then finally, we come to our TP segment. So TP segments from the end of the T wave up until here, all right, pretty much our baseline, okay? So this area here is our TP segment, which we've labeled here as our baseline, okay? Usually an isoelectric area that we see. Okay, so what we'll do here is go through each aspect of the cardiac complex and see how it relates to the underlying electrical activity of the heart. And let's first start with the baseline. So the baseline is where most of the cardiac muscle is at rest, okay? And let's just see, clear some of this up so that when we go through it, uh, we have some room, okay? So again, our baseline, this region here, all right? So what we have going on as we get to this portion here is we have the sinus nodal cells are slowly depolarizing until they reach that threshold level and then they initiate an impulse, okay? Remember, this is our sinus node right there and then it spreads through the internodal pathways to our av node so our sinus node fires an impulse then we have these internodal pathways okay notice them here three internodal pathways an anterior middle and posterior they come to our av node and then we also have a one that's coming over here to the left side we call that the bachman bundle okay depolarizing the left side of the atrium so sinus node fires and we have this okay this is all occurring at that baseline level Next, we come to the PR interval. Remember, the PR interval includes this P wave and the PR segment. This is this portion here, okay? So both the P wave and PR segment. And if you recall, the P wave represents atrial depolarization. And what we'll see is that the right atrium depolarizes before the left atrium. And why is that? We'll notice our sinus node is here in the right atrium atrium okay so right atrium depolarizes before the left atrium okay and then in this area the pr interval represents most of it is av nodal uh, delay meaning there's a normal physiologic block that happens at the av node and most of the pr interval represents this portion and we'll also have atrial repolarization and this is usually not able to be able to see because it's actually sometimes buried within the qrs complex um, or it may just not even show up because it's so minimal.
So let's take a look at these vectors here. Let me erase some of this stuff so we can see what's going on. And I want you to notice that we said the right atrium is depolarizing before the left atrium, okay? So this beginning portion of our P wave, okay, that we're gonna show here is the right atrial depolarization represented by this blue arrow. So we'll label it one, okay? And notice that this arrow is going rightward inferiorly and it's actually going slightly anteriorly, okay? So the beginning of the P wave represents right atrial depolarization polarization and this arrow is going rightward okay slightly inferiorly and uh, slightly anteriorly okay so if we look at lead v1 all right we're looking at lead 2 here so it's going inferiorly towards that lead that's why we see it going upwards okay in v1 we could also see it going upward like this so this would be the beginning of our p wave in v1 okay again this this uh, vector is heading this way in that direction and we said the right atrium is depolarizing before the left atrium. So the next portion to depolarize is this left atrium. Okay, so this arrow number two, this green arrow heading in this direction. In this way, now we have the vector that's heading leftward inferiorly. So inferiorly still going towards the inferior lead. That's why it's still positively deflected. Okay, still above baseline. All right, and also going slightly posteriorly. Okay, so the end portion is the left atrium being depolarized of the P wave. And what we'll see here in V1, remember V1 is one of the right precordial leads sitting on the anterior plane, okay? The other limb leads are the frontal plane. So if we have this in the horizontal plane, uh, we have the P wave, okay? It's heading towards these, as the right atrium depolarizes, it heads towards V1, okay, anteriorly. But as the left atrium depolarizes, it actually heads posteriorly away from it, okay? If you had a 3D image of this, you would see that the P wave heads away from V1, and that's why in V1 you'll sometimes see these biphasic P waves. Remember, the beginning of it represents the right atrium depolarizing, and the latter portion of the terminal portion of this biphasic P wave would represent the left atrium. Remember, the beginning of the P wave is the right atrium because we're starting the impulse here at the sinus node, which sits right in the right atrium, okay? So just to review, right atrial depolarization, we have this rightward inferiorly an anterior directed um, vector, and then in the left atrial depolarization, which happens afterwards, uh, it's directed leftwardly, inferiorly, and slightly posteriorly, okay? So going backwards as well as inferiorly and leftward. If you had a 3D uh, image of the heart, it'd be easier to see, okay? We can only do a 2D at this point here. And then as the left atrium is beginning to complete its uh, depolarization, then we have the right atrium will begin its repolarization, okay? And then after uh, right atrium repolarizes, then the left atrium will repolarize, okay? And then we have both that are repolarized, and then we have this AV nodal physiologic block that's occurring here, okay, delaying the impulse that makes up most of our PR interval. Usually it's about that portion of it, okay? So then after this AV nodal physiological block, we, the impulse then proceeds through the His bundle. This is the His bundle here, okay? And then after the His bundle, it goes to the right and left bundle branches. The left bundle branch has a left anterior fascicle as well as a left posterior fascicle. And then from these bundle branches, the right bundle branch and these fascicles on the left side, you go to a ventricular Purkinje system. And then these ventricular Purkinje fibers innervate the myocardial cells, which then has the impulse traveling from the endocardial to the epicardial surface of the heart. The endocardial being the inner surface and the epicardial being the outer surface. So now we have the ventricles depolarizing, right? And if you recall, what does what represents ventricular depolarization on the uh, in the EKG? That's our QRS complex, okay? Represents ventricular depolarization, and that's this portion right here, our QRS complex, okay? And what we have going on here is that the upper ventricular septal area depolarizes first from left to right, okay? And if you notice here, this is the first area of depolarization, the septal area from the left to right area, okay? So it's going left to right, and we call this right here a septal 
Q wave, okay? Why is it a Q wave? It's a negative deflection because it's going away from this lead, okay? And a Q wave because it's the first negative deflection after our P wave. And this represents the upper uh, ventricular septum being depolarized, okay? So this region here, remember the septum, the ventricular septum is the area between the ventricles, okay? And then we have the main ventricle starts to depolarize, and this vector heads in a leftward, inferiorly, and posterior direction, okay? And you'll notice it here, this bigger vector here in purple heading this way, okay? Leftward, towards the left, inferiorly, as well as posteriorly. And this is the main left ventricle depolarizing, and what we have, because it's heading in that direction, a depolarization wave, we get this big R wave, okay? And that's this wave here. This portion here is our R wave, okay? Depolarization wave heading towards the two, we see this big positive deflection of our QRS complex. And the last portion, the remaining portion of the left ventricle then depolarizes. And in this way, it heads leftward, upward, and posteriorly. That's where the vector is going, and that's here in red. So it's this in red, and it's going leftward, upward, and posteriorly. And that's where we get these S waves from, okay? And that's this terminal portion. This area right there is our S wave. Again, it's heading away from Li2, and it's a depolarization wave. That's why we see a negative deflection, okay? So again, first one is this left to right depolarization of the septum, okay? This pink area here. Let's just erase this and show these arrows. So again, this is the first vector. Then we have the main portion of the left ventricle depolarizing, and then the rest, the remaining portion, okay? So the first portion is our Q wave. The second portion, the main portion, is our R wave. And we get this third vector, which gives us our S wave at the end. Now, did you notice that we didn't mention the right ventricle when discussing the QRS complex? That is because in adults, the left ventricle's mass is much greater than that of the right ventricle, such that it makes the impulses from the right ventricle appear insignificant and thus makes the QRS complex represent mostly the activity coming from the left ventricle. In infants and young children, this would not be the case, because if you recall, the right ventricle acts as the adult's left ventricle in the last trimester of pregnancy. In other words, the right ventricle is the dominant ventricle in the fetus at that point. It is not until the end of the first month of the newborn's life that the left ventricle begins to be, become dominant again, okay? And it is then over time as the left ventricle increases in its dominance that the electrical axis shifts leftward in that direction. Anyways, this is a little more information, but it doesn't hurt to know. Okay, so ventricular depolarization has now ended and the QRS complex is complete. Next, we have the ST segment, which is an electrically neutral period between ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization. The myocardium is maintaining contraction to expel blood from the ventricles, and this is normally located at the level of baseline. So if you look here, again, let's erase some of all this writing so we can see what the ST segment is. The ST segment, the time between ventricular depolarization, which is our QRS complex, and ventricular repolarization, which is our T wave. So let's show that. Here's our QRS, and this is our T wave here. The ST segment starts at their J point or junction point and goes until here. That's our ST segment. And we said this is an area that's electrically neutral. It's the period between ventricular depolarization and repolarization. The myocardium is maintaining contraction to expel blood from the ventricles. All right, so now we get to ventricular repolarization, which is represented by the T wave on the EKG. So again, we said this is the T wave representing ventricular repolarization. Now, there are two portions of the T wave that I want you to be aware of, the early portion of the T wave and the late portion of the T wave. The early portion of the T wave represents absolute refractory period. This is the time in which ventricular cells are depolarized uh, more de more ventricular cells are depolarized than repolarized, okay? If you look here, we have more being depolarized compared to the repolarized cells. And because of this, the ventricular cells will be refractory to any new impulse that comes its way, okay? So we're talking about the early portion of the T wave. That would be this portion here. Okay, and we're saying that this area, think about it, we have all this ventricular depolarization that just occurred, so we're going to still have more cells that are still depolarized in the ventricle compared to repolarized. 
And because of that, it will be refractory to any new impulse coming its way, meaning that any impulse that's coming down this pathway, down our conduction system, will not be able to get through because of this absolute refractory period. Then we have this later terminal portion of the T wave, which represents relative refractory period. This is the time in which we have more ventricular cells that are repolarized than depolarized. And because of this, the ventricular cells are now ready to receive any new impulse that's coming its way. Okay, so again, we're talking about now that terminal portion of our T wave, and in this case, this is the relative refractory period where more ventricular cells are repolarized, and because more, most of them are repolarized, meaning they're ready to receive any new impulse that's coming their way. And lastly, we have the TP segment. We mentioned it as almost the baseline before. So here's our TP segment. The TP segment is typically electrically neutral and represents the time in which the heart is relaxing, the automaticity is continuing, and then the cycle will, will repeat itself. Okay. In our TP segment, we said, again, erase some of this, our TP segments from this point here. Here's our T wave and there's our P wave. It's this portion in between here, an electrically neutral area, okay, where the heart is relaxing, getting ready for the cycle to repeat itself, okay? Now, hopefully all this is coming together. Let's briefly re discuss, uh, go over what we discussed before we end here, okay? So the baseline, we said, is where the sinus, this is the beginning, the sinus nodal cells are beginning to depolarize, the threshold's being reached, the impulse goes off, okay, from this area here. It's spreading through those internodal pathways, we said, and it comes to this AV node. We also have this Bachmann bundle to the left side, okay? So that's still at this baseline period here. Then we have the PR interval, made up of the P wave and this PR segment, this portion here. Most of it represents AV nodal uh, delay, okay? That's where most of the delay or most of, the, of this uh, is occurring here in the PR interval. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. And one important thing to note is that the early portion of the P wave represents right atrial depolarization, and that terminal portion represents left atrial depolarization. Notice the two vectors we had the one vector here in blue that was heading in this direction, right? It was going rightward, anteriorly, and inferiorly. And then we have this one that's going uh, leftward, posteriorly, and still inferiorly. Okay, so the inferior leads in lead two, we will see upright P waves, especially in the sinus rhythm because it's coming from here. Okay, and then we have our PR segment. This area here, mostly made up of that AV nodal uh, delay and conduction there. We also mentioned that there's the atrial repolarize. Oftentimes we don't see it and it's neutral in this area. And sometimes it can actually be buried within our QRS complex. And that's another reason why we may not see it. Now the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. Okay, We mentioned that there are three different vectors that you should be aware of. The first vector was this one here, representing left to right septal depolarization. And that's where we get those septal Q waves, okay? If you look here, that little portion in the beginning is our septal Q wave. And then we get a big R wave. This big R wave is represented because of this big main arrow vector heading that direction. So that is the main portion of the left ventricle being depolarized. And then we have the S wave. The S wave is the terminal portion of our QRS complex because this is the remaining portion of the left ventricle that's getting depolarized. And remember, we said this is mostly the left ventricle that we're talking about. We don't mention the right ventricle because the left ventricle is the dominant portion uh, in adults in the heart. Then we come to the ST segment. The ST segment is that neutral period, right? Sometimes we can see problems there if someone has an infarct or some ischemia. And that area should be neutral, and that's the area between ventricular depolarization, our QRS complex, and ventricular repolarization, our T wave. Okay, and then we have our ventricular repolarization, our T wave. Okay, and we mentioned there's two different portions to be aware of the early T wave and the late T wave. The early T wave representing the absolute refractory period where we have more cells being depolarized, okay? And in that case, we cannot receive any new impulse. It's refractory. Then we have the late T wave, the relative refractory period where we have more repolarized cells. And because of that, we are ready to get the next impulse to come down to the ventricles.
And then we end with our TP segment, this portion here. The TP segment is where the heart starts to relax, automaticity continues, and the whole cycle then repeats itself. Well, that's the end of this lecture. We discussed how the cardiac cycle relates to the complex formed on the EKG. I hope you learned something. Thank you.